good afternoon to you. Can I welcome you to the Robin Chapel afternoon broadcast on behalf of my fellow trustees of the Thistle Trust? It's a particular pleasure to have you with us this afternoon, and we'll try to maintain these services each week uh, during the period of lockdown of the chapel. Today we have the privilege of having as our guest preacher the very Reverend Dr. Derek Browning, who's a former moderator of the Church of Scotland, uh, who was moderator from May 2017, and uh, he's Minister of Morningside to Church in Edinburgh. He's a very good friend of the Robin Chapel in that not only does he preach, but he joins us for worship on occasion. We are going to worship God by beginning in prayer and this week I've selected a prayer from uh, the late Professor William Barclay's book of uh, prayers. William Barclay was a remarkable man, he was lecture, uh, uh, professor of New Testament at the University of Glasgow Trinity College and he was a very popular broadcaster coming on on a Sunday evening for half an hour gowned and giving a lecture which actually has the highest record for any uh, venture on BBC Scotland even now decades later. So let us begin our worship of God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, without you we can neither think nor act aright. Help us to banish from our minds all bitter thoughts which would divide us from others, all proud thoughts which would make us conceited and contemptuous of others, and which would make us think of our own place and prestige. All selfish thoughts, which would make us regardless of the needs and of the feelings of others. All impure thoughts, which would give temptation its chance and which would leave a stain upon our minds. Help us to banish from our lives all careless work which isn't good enough to show to you, all cowardly action which is afraid to show what it believes, all thoughtless action which forgets to look at the consequences of what it does, all rash action which is at the mercy of the impulse or the passion of the moment. Help us to think in purity and in love. Help us to act in honesty and honour. Hear this our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, and from verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. 
I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will look upon it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Amen, and may the Lord bless to us this reading from his holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and thoughts in all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Rainbow Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Emily Dickinson's poem captures something of the fragility and persistence of that quintessential Christian virtue, hope. In the gale, in the storm, in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea, hope like a tiny bird perches in the distraught soul, singing the wordless song of hope, singing without ceasing. That is surely what hope is, fragile but never ever giving up. Fragile but resilient. Hope tells us that God does not give up. God does not let go. God finds different ways in different times to stir God's people and make them question and wonder and think and disagree and act. At this stage in the lockdown, I suspect each one of us could do with something of that hope in our lives which is why that wonderful passage from the book of Genesis, talking about the rainbow, remains one of the most hopeful things in the whole of the Bible. The creation story of the flood ends not in destruction, but in hope, and the rainbow is a sign of God's hope. The Noah story is about despair and hope. It is a parable of condemnation and redemption, of rejection and welcome. God's judgment is overridden. The floods abate and a hopeful creation emerges out of the chaos and judgment. Hope comes. It can be read as a parable of our time, that relentless flood of COVID-19 that surrounds us now is not so very different from the flood of the story of Noah. Stuck in the arcs of our homes, day after long day, night after longer night, when will release come? That's what comes before the rainbow of hope. Humanity is often without hope. Hope depends entirely on a move from God. God resolves to stay with endure and sustain our world, notwithstanding our brokenness. God takes as God's ultimate vocation not judgment, but affirmation. After the unrelenting grim time in the parable of the flood, in the present reality of COVID-19, hope will come to us. That is God's way. God makes an irreversible commitment and says, never again. On this basis, the rainbow sign is established. The bow is a promise. If the bow is remotely a weapon, it is an undrawn bow. 
God will never again be provoked to use the weapon of total destruction against humanity. The Ark of the Bow is rooted in the earth, but reaches up to heaven, connecting us in a bridge of mercy and grace and hope. The God who is revealed here remains willing to accept hurt, to keep hope alive. Hope will never be cut off because of us. Hope comes very often despite us. We're not immune to future crises. Bad times will come to envelop the earth. But as they do, when they do, God's hope will come again and we will win through. We will meet again. We will overcome. What does the body of Christ look like in the light of the rainbow? What would it mean for our church, every church, to put God's rainbow at the hopeful heart of all that we say and think and do? Today should have been the Church of Scotland's Assembly Sunday. A few years ago, before I became moderator, I was in the assembly hall recording the voiceover for a photography project for the church. I noticed in the Lord High Commissioner's gallery the stained glass window behind the throne. It has three parts. On its left, an image of the nativity scene. On its right, an image of the body of Jesus being loaded into the tomb by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. And in the middle of the stained glass is Christ in majesty, with the judgment book opened upon his knees. But he is seated on a rainbow. There is a rainbow of hope in the heart of the General Assembly Hall of the Church of Scotland. We could do with a few more rainbows in the church. Jesus might very well have wanted you to be a sunbeam at some point, but I suspect he's rather partial to rainbows too. The rainbow is a symbol of hope, a symbol of our remembering God. It is a central message of God's love and hope to us and to all God's children. As we wonder about the possibility of the end of lockdown, whenever that comes, we need to debate our future, but we must create it in hope. Those rainbows we've been putting in our windows need to be put on our churches. The church needs to become a porous community within our nation. Through our sometimes brokenness from our poorest church with its open windows and doors, the light and the rainbow of hope will arc out into the world. Our hope is to become an example of what is possible when people agree that wealth and poverty, age and gender, race and sexuality, strength of faith and strength of doubt are not barriers but bridges. Not storm clouds of judgment, but rainbows of hope. The world is in transition. It always is. The church is in transition. It always is. An American colleague said a couple of years ago that the church is not dying, it is reforming. John Cleese said in the film Clockwise, It's not despair I mind, it's hope that I can't stand. Hope challenges our fatalism, which is why it remains so unsettling. Hope even in a time of pandemic. As Jonathan Sachs, former chief rabbi, wrote, All I know is that the greatest achievement in life is to have been for one person, even for a moment, an agent of hope. As the American writer Maya Angelou once wrote, try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us again come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, You've prepared for those who love you 
such good things as pass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Jesus, you, the hope of all who trust you, the power of all who serve you, the wisdom of all who follow you, the gatherer of all who worship you, grant us light to see through the gloom of these troubled times. Fill us with hope to bolster our resolve as we face difficulties. Give hope to our nation as we put trust in our leaders that they may make decisions which do lead us forward. As you are our hope, be with those who face the challenge of healing the sick, of comforting the bereaved, and of rejoicing with the recovered. Give hope to the homeless, to the lonely, to the unemployed, to the oppressed, to the abused, to those facing emotional or physical suffering or financial distress, that they may see light in the way ahead out of their current suffering. Let all our cities, towns and villages flourish through the preaching of your word and the praise of your name. And we pray and hope for the Thistle Foundation, its work within the community, and for our community of the Robin Chapel. Together, we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
a benediction. May the Lord bless and guard you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace in these troubled times. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love wherever they may be, this day and even forevermore. Amen.